Now, back in November 2019 through to January 2020, I had my very first exhibition for my World War II Veterans Portraits project. The portraits on display were printed at around about 20 inches on the longest edge, and so many people commented that the portraits looked as though they were coming forward of the paper, and if you reached out, you could touch the faces. Now that was largely down to a technique in Photoshop that I call 2010. And in this video, I wanna show you exactly how it's done. Now before I show you the technique, let me just explain the idea behind it and why it works so well. When we look at photographs, even though they're printed on a flat piece of paper, we know that what we're looking at isn't flat and two-dimensional in real life. You see, when we look at a picture and you have light and dark areas, as a general rule of thumb, the lighter areas appear closer and the darker areas appear further back. This is what gives it depth and dimension. For example, here I've added just a simple default shape in Photoshop onto a layer and above it another layer where I'm going to do some dodging and burning. So now if I use the dodge tool, to apply some lightening on part of this shape. And then I also apply the burn tool to darken areas within the shape. Very quickly, we can make the shape come to life and give it what looks like a bit of shape and contour. Another example is in this picture here. If we zoom in, we can see that the actual ripples here within the shirt are created by light and dark areas. If I now add a new layer to the top of the layer stack and I fill that with 50% gray and change the blend mode to soft light, I can then use the dodge and burn tools to actually make even more folds within the t-shirt. I'll just add a few strokes with the dodge tool and either side of it, I then apply a few strokes with the burn tool and there we have what looks like a natural fold within the shirt, all created by light and dark areas. So knowing now then that lighter means closer and darker means further back, if we lighten the lighter areas and darken the darker areas, we can enhance it even further. Now contrast is doing exactly that, lightening lighter areas and darkening the dark areas. And by doing that, it gives the image much more punch. However, in this example here of a portrait I took of a very close friend of mine called Brian Dukes, if I now just add a curves adjustment layer and use one of the presets to apply strong contrast, we can see that it actually doesn't look that good. And in fact, we're even affecting the color on the image. Now we could come over to the layers panel here and change the blend mode of this curves adjustment layer to luminosity, but even that has its limits and will only help so much. So instead, this is what I do. Now going back to this portrait of my friend Brian Dukes, I first of all need to create what is called a merged or stamp layer to the top of the layer stack. To do that on Mac, I'm gonna hold down the Shift, Option, Command and E keys, or on Windows, Shift, Alt, Control and E. That then adds a merged layer at the top of the layer stack, and I'm gonna double click to rename this one 20. Then what I'll do is I'm gonna to go to the Filter menu and choose Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. Now, Unsharp Mask allows us to add a lot of contrast to our images before we start to see the image breaking down, any changes in the color, any halos or anything like that whatsoever. It really does give us a lot of flexibility. Now, in here we have three sliders, the amount, the radius and the threshold. The threshold will always remain at zero. But for this 2010 technique, the first thing I'm going to do is to put into the amount 20. So 20%, and the rule here is that whatever the amount is, the radius needs to be the same. So if in this example, the amount is 20, therefore the radius will also be 20. And already we can see if I put my cursor into this preview area here and press down and release, press down and release, we can see that already quite a lot of contrast is being added. I'm now gonna click OK, and that's obviously going to apply that contrast to the whole of the image, but I don't want that. I want it so that the face only appears to be coming forward. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to come to the bottom of the layers panel, and on Mac, I'm gonna hold down the Option key, and on Windows, I'll hold down the Alt key, and I will click to add a layer mask. And when I do that, it will add a black layer mask. So now the results of the Unsharp Mask filter are being hidden behind this black mask. 
I can now just get a simple round soft brush with a white foreground colour and I can paint exactly where I want that unsharp mask contrast to appear, which at the moment is just in the middle. So it's around on his face like so. Now we can see where we've revealed that by pressing the backslash key and any area not covered in the overlay is where you've now got that contrast being applied. You could also come over to the layer panel where you have that layer mask if you hold down the option key on Mac, alt key on Windows and then click directly on the layer mask, it will show you exactly where you've revealed the contrast. So that's part one. We now need to do the 10 part of the 2010 technique. So I'm now going to add another merged or stamp layer to the top of the layer stack using that long keyboard shortcut, which on Mac is Shift, Option, Command and E, and on Windows, Shift, Alt, Control and E. And I'll double click to rename this one to 10. Then what I'll do is I'll go back to the filter menu, choose Sharpen, and then go to the Unsharp Mask. Now, because I already added the 20 in the amount and radius, the second part of this technique is to halve it. So instead of 20, I'm now going to put in 10 on the amount, which also means the radius needs to change to be 10 as well. And then I'll click OK. And just as before, that contrast, albeit a little less, has again now been applied to the whole of the picture. We only want it in certain areas. So I'll hold down the Option key on Mac or Alt key on Windows, click on the layer mask icon to add a black layer mask to hide that effect, I'll then go back to my brush, but this time, instead of painting it all over the face, all I'm going to do is just reduce the size of the brush and brush it over the eyes, down the nose, and across the mouth. So if I now press that backslash key, this is where I'm revealing that contrast. So now let's put this 2010 layers here into a group. So the uppermost one is highlighted. I'll hold down the shift key, click on the one below, and then come to the top right hand corner of the layers panel and choose new group from layers and I'll just call this 2010 and click OK. Now I'm really hoping this shows up on your screens but if I turn that off and on, off and on, we've added a lot of contrast to this image which means we've lightened the lighter areas and darkened the darker areas which is going to make the face appear as if it's coming forward. You'll notice this on your screen but you'll really notice this when it's printed. And here is the final retouch picture of my friend Brian. Now I do this pretty much on every portrait that I take and people are always commenting about how it makes it look as if the face is coming forward out of the screen or out of the print. It kind of brings them to life. So I really hope this has been useful. If it has and you've liked this video, please do give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, click on that subscribe button. It's just a great free way that you can support this channel. But if you do use this technique, make sure you leave a comment in the comment section below. But for now, that's me. I am done. I'll see you in the next video.